On this day in 1998, Joseph Wenglos was appointed manager of Celtic. Few Celtic managers were ever dealt a tougher hand than Dr Joe Wenglos when he was unveiled as Celtic's new manager in the summer of 1998. The circumstances around his arrival could not have been more difficult, with Wim Janssen walking out two days after the exhausting, nerve-jangling and eventually successful effort to stop Rangers' charge to ten in a row. Efforts to appoint a successor were hampered by that summer's World Cup finals in France, and this was exacerbated by Celtic having more players participating in the finals than any other club in the world. Several returned for the new season unrested and carrying niggling injuries. In the case of Mark Reaper, a colossus in Janssen's defence, an injury picked up at the World Cup ended his career. In February of that year, Rangers had secured the services of Dick Advocat, and he arrived to replace Walter Smith in the close season, to be handed a blank Bank of Scotland chequebook, which saw the arrival of a string of big money continental signings, including Arthur Newman, Giovanni van Bronckhurst, Andrei Kanchelskis, Colin Hendry, Stefan Kloss and Claudio Reyna. All told, Advocat signed £36 million worth of players that season. This would be a huge outlay even today. 24 years ago, it was an astounding amount and more than most English Premier League clubs spent that year. July 1998 was only a few weeks after James Traynor's succulent lamb dinner with David Murray and the press coverage of Scottish football was almost completely controlled by the Ibrox chairman. It was in their treatment of Joe Vengloss that Scotland's so-called football journalists reached the nadir of the depths they plumbed to serve Murray. As his title suggests, Dr Joe was one of the most highly educated, highly qualified coaches in world football. He had been part of the coaching staff that led Czechoslovakia to their European Championship win in 1976. He was the head coach who led them to the World Cup quarter-finals in 1990 and had later been appointed head of the European Coaches Union and a member of UEFA's technical committee at France 98. But the press derided him with Doctor Who and called him a blank check. They characterised this courteous, eminently decent man on his arrival in a new country as an elderly incompetent, with every story portraying him as ineffective and out of his depth. Probably the most shameful episode of all came with a press conference in September when Wenglos defended his fitness for the job by inviting any of the assembled press corps to join him on his daily run. A non-entity of a tabloid journalist by the name of Ian Campbell fabricated this as a challenge to race him and had himself photographed outside Celtic Park in a tracksuit, challenging a 62-year-old man to a race. It was hardly surprising Celtic got off to a difficult start to the season, but as players like Vidar Riseth, Johan Mialbi and especially Lubo Moravcic began to arrive, performances began to pick up and in November, Lubo inspired a 5-1 demolition of Rangers at Celtic Park. It was probably already too late to catch them by that time, but some of the football played in the middle part of the season was of the highest standard. Unfortunately, they had run out of steam by the end, and the signing of Mark Viduka, great player as he was, turned into a long-running pantomime that probably did more harm than good. The Scottish Cup final was lost in disappointing fashion to Rangers to end the season. Dr Joe resigned at the end of the season to make way for the dream team of Dalglees and Barnes, and how many fans wished that the popular Vengloss had stayed on as that season's disaster unfolded. Joe Vengloss was the right man at the wrong time, and his legacy was a positive one as players like Mialbi and Moravchik played such a vital role in ending Rangers' dominance under Martin O'Neill. He passed away in 2021 and is fondly remembered by fans of that era.